All right. Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? What's up? It's your boy, The Real AE. Today, we are going to be exposing the news. All right. This is a very in depth news training. There's going to be a lot of info thrown at you. There's going to be a lot of notes that you need to take. And there's going to be a lot of things that you need to pay attention to. All right. So, in this conversation today, I am going to be exposing the news. And what I mean by exposing, right? Exposure is shedding light. When you think about it, right? You have to shed light on subjects that you don't know. And with news, you got to do that daily, right? And the way that the news cycle works and all that this kind of stuff, as you guys can tell, <laughs> I'm on IG Live, so this is going to be a good one. So if you're somebody like me and you, you, you've done journalism, went to school for journalism, you're on social media heavy all the time, every single time. Like, you're going to look at yourself and go, okay, I need to wake up, right? I need to understand how these cycles work. I need to understand, actually, matter of fact, we ain't going to, look, look at this, look at this. My IG Live want to start tripping right when I want to get right. That's crazy. No matter of fact, I ain't going to do it. We'll do it like this. I'm going to get my IG Live cranked up. Let's do this. Exposing the news. Bet. Bada bing, bada boom. We're going to do like this. All right. So everybody on this call, drop a one in the chat if you have heard of the news. Like, you know what news is. You kind of have an idea, but you've heard of it. Drop a one in the chat if you've heard what the news is, right? And the reason I'm having this conversation today is because we are now in an information era where information is everything. And where information is everything... And attention is what's profitable. News is the medium that connects attention, information to attention and profit. See what I'm saying? Now, stick with me. If the news companies, right? If the news companies, CNN, Fox, MSNBC, Bloomberg, TikTok, Twitter, if their job is to make money, then they have to sell you information, be the medium to get your attention, right? If you guys look at the word media, media comes from the Latin word M-E-D-I, which is medi. It means medium, means middle. So social media platform's job or the news's job is to get you information, right? They got to get you info and they got to get your attention. And if they can get your attention, with the information they're providing through a medium such as television, newspaper, uh, Twitter, like, you know, social media, then they can make money. The longer you spend your attention into the medium that's feeding you the information, the more money that the company is going to make. Does this make sense? So check me out. So if I'm the news company, what do you think my job is going to be? My job is not to give you information that you might need to survive, to live, to grow, to flourish. No, 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 right? My job is to feed you information that's going to keep your attention because I need your attention to make money. And then if I'm making money, I could take that money and drive the market, whether it's e-commerce, whether it's groceries, whether it's clothing, whether it's entertainment, whether it's movies, everything. Because then, then I can collect your data, <laughs> which is your watch times, your location services, your clicks. The news company's job is to collect all that data. And then they're going to take that data, sell it to advertisers, and then the advertisers sell it back to you because that's what you're paying attention to. That's how algorithms are born. So when people argue, oh, well, there's an algorithm this or an algorithm that, oh, my algorithm is all messed up. Your algorithm is directly correlated to the attention that, to the information you pay attention to. So think about this as an investor. If I'm an investor, what do you think I should be thinking about? Huh? Where are people paying the most attention to? And here's a caveat. 
where are people not paying enough attention to? Sometimes the money doesn't always follow where you want it to go. All right? Money is going to go where it's allowed to move freely without interruption. I'm going to say that again. The money in media is not always going to go towards what you want it to go towards. It's going to go towards the topics and the discussions that there's not a lot of what? Traffic. Foot traffic, visual traffic, entertainment traffic, streaming traffic. So guess what? So when AT&T towers go down, because if they got hacked, think about how much traffic goes through those towers to run the electricity, to run the technology so that the information can even get to you. So, God, so that's where I'm exposing the media is because the information that you're being fed is by design. It's by design. It's not, oh, it's just by chance. It's by design. So that if I understand that the social media company's job is to make money with the information they're providing and then to feed advertisers and ads and get influencers and get government officials and politicians and all this stuff so you can keep paying attention, so you can keep the attention on a topic that means absolutely nothing to your financial situation, then the media company can make money, sell it back to advertisers, and then the advertisers can promote you ads. I'm going to call a few out, ladies, ladies. What do you think the, some of the, the top advertisement for the African-American community last year was the Rose, was the Rose uh, vibrator? Was the one of the number one, the number one most advertised product out there for black women was the Rose vibrator. As a guy, I saw it everywhere. I said, why is this a thing? Because the media companies know that the black woman is the most emotional and they are the most going to spend money based off of their emotions and trying to keep up with other black women. Sex, makeup, alcohol. Those are the top three things that advertise, that advertise to you as a black woman, as a black, and as a black man. Tell me I'm lying. Sex, makeup, and alcohol. Tell me I'm lying. Then the clothes come later. Then the clothes come later. But it's easy. Everybody's got a TikTok shop for makeup. Think about all the makeup tutorials you see. Think about all the times like where you're not getting, you're not getting, you're not getting enough sexual desire. No man can please me, right? That when the music artists come in, like Sexy Red, like Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, they start rapping about, I don't need no man. I can please myself. SZA, Janae Aiko, Summer Walker, they all start singing about what? Black women empowerment. They all by yourself. And then, they, then you go, then the advertisers know, dang, okay, all these women are sad and lonely or not getting sexually pleased and they don't need a man. So I got to advertise to you a sexual project of sexual products that's going to that's going to sexualize that's going to feed your sexual loneliness. If I sell you information of independence and I can keep you in the media to do that, I can make money. And the after they do this all the time for my fellas, we suffer it from too. That's where gang culture comes from. That's where everybody wants to be an athlete comes from. Everybody wants to be a musician comes from, fellas. Everybody wants to be a pimp. We all want to be gangsters because that's hot. That's the information we want because we keep watching it over and over and over and over again. So the algorithm goes, I bet I might as well just offer it to you. I, I might as well offer it to you, right? Now, why does this matter to you as an investor? Because I'm actually going to dive into news a little bit deeper, but I need to give you guys context of how this goes because when we talk about the money aspect and where you can actually position yourself, it's going to make a lot of sense. So I hope you guys are excited. Like, that's just opening words. 
let's get, let's just get right into it. All right. So check this out. Let's check this out for a second. Right. So I crafted up this quick little presentation and we're going to dive into news, what it's for, what stuff means. So you're not confused about nothing. So you're not manipulated. Like I said, this is a call. We are not going to be manipulated by news. So if you're paying attention on here on YouTube, you paying attention on IG, pay attention, take notes. Don't go anywhere because it's about to get nasty. All right, let's do it. News. For those who don't know, news is actually an acronym. Fun fact of the day. News is an acronym. It means notable events, whether in sports. So that's news. News means notable events, weather, and sports. So fun fact for today. If you didn't know, news is an acronym. All right. Now, why does this matter? Because it does these things. News exists to inform you, to educate you, to guide you, to entertain you, interpret, interpret information, form opinions, spread awareness, and to advertise. And for a lot of us, we don't even we don't even pay attention that we're being that's like you know how people sometimes talk about like man I hate being sold to or man I hate I hate I hate door to door salespeople or I hate this or I hate that family you're being sold to every single day through news that's literally their job their job is to inform you of what's happening educate you on what they want to talk about guide you through mess whether it was the the British are coming Pearl Harbor uh. Silky Santana wants you to vote for Biden and Harris. Um, white conservative, white conservative Southern Mississippian people want you to vote for Trump. Um, Democrats want to push LGBTQ communities and allow transgenderism in schools. Whatever the topic is, their job is to get information to you. And the companies that get the information to you have the money to do so. Because if you keep paying attention to them, they get more watch hours. More watch hours makes more money. More money means I can re-advertise it and resell you the BS over and over and over again. And that's where the rat race comes from. All right? So when you're, so when you're thinking to yourself like, okay, well, how do I get ahead of the news? Right? You need to know who you're up against. You need to know who you're up against. Right? There's over 100 news channels live daily in the U.S. alone. Live from local to national, a hundred. So there's absolutely no way for you to be ahead of all this. But it's a catch. This is how you stay ahead. The way you stay ahead of news is you need to know who runs the bit, who runs the big ball, who runs it. It's four companies, four, four. There's only four. Walt Disney, CBS, NBCU, and Fox. That's it. There's only four. But yet they sell you all these different companies everywhere. Oh, um, ABC 121 out of Raleigh, Durham. Uh, Fox 11 out of Arkansas. Man, they're all ran by the same four big dogs. All four big head honchos. Walt Disney, CBS Entertainment Group, NBCU, and Fox. So CNN, CNNBC, MSNBC, ABC News, Good Morning America, ESPN, The Herd, uh, all those radio shows that, you know, the podcasting shows on the radio, NPR, they're all owned by those four companies, every single one of them. So in my mind, I'm not thinking of, okay, maybe I don't need to listen to CNN, right? I need to go, bam, okay, maybe I need to pay, to, pay attention to Disney because Disney on CNN and ESPN. So if Disney says something about the news or they report something, what, yes or no in the chat, would that not be important to you to know? If Disney makes the call, could because if Disney makes the call, then that means every single subsidiary that Disney owns has to follow the same motto. So you're like, dang, why did, why does, like, who's, are you guys, are you guys sticking with me on this one? I mean, maybe you're like your head's blown, but it's okay. So check me out. Anything that comes out in the news has to start somewhere. <laughs> it has to start. It doesn't come from just Tucker Carlson speaking out of his behind or Anderson Cooper speaking out of his behind. No, guys. The way news works is that something happens in the world. It gets ran through by a bunch of producers and then it goes to the writers 
who writes the teleprompters. So then when you see your favorite Anderson Cooper, Don Lemon, Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, whoever it is, you're watching the news. Uh, who was it? Uh, Ryan Clark. Freaking, um, let's see, Ryan Clark. Sh uh, Shan not Shannon Sharp. Well, Shannon Sharp, for real. Like, Shannon Sharp, Richard Sherman, Sha Shaquille O'Neal, all Ryan Clark. Uh, Kevin, all these guys, these are writers. They go to the producers and then it goes to the directors. And if it gets approval from head to toe, then those anchors, now think about it for you. Why are they called anchors, guys? Why do you think they're called anchors? Think about it. Their job is to hold your attention. That's why they're called anchors. What do anchors do? Anchors hold ships still. They don't allow them to move. So the news anchor's job is to get you to what? Stop moving and listen to me. I have information to give to you. It is my job as the news anchor, sports caster. What is casting? Casting is I got to cast a message. I got to cast this message. Like casting a spell, boom, cast a spell. I got to cast you this information. Because I got approval from my writers to my directors to my producers, all the way down to the teleprompter. Then the teleprompter is gonna, somebody's gonna type it out. The script writer, they gotta write it out and then he's gotta read it verbatim. That's why when you see videos of people saying the same stuff, it's because a uh, great, great example when COVID started coming out, when COVID started coming out, Everybody across the board was like, yo, we got to shut down the country. So they put out this massive script and told everybody to say the same thing on national television. Six feet apart, wash your hands, go get the vaccine. It was the same message, was it not? Now, was it, it, was it said in different ways? Absolutely. But that's where their job is to keep you confused. It's the same message. We, I will hope you take notes on this. Stop focusing on the messenger so much and focus on what it, the message is. Who cares where it came from? What matters is what just the hell was said. Like, you gotta cast the line like fish. Exactly. It doesn't matter who said it. It's what was said. And then the media companies can divert on how it was said and they write it out, right? So guys, when you guys are thinking about where news is at today, this is the game. Pete game. Game meets game. This is how the game is. This is how you not get messed up. All right? So does this make sense? Drop a one in the chat. Drop some fire emojis. Do we, are we, are we here? I, uh, this is not a, this is not a low level conversation. I'm going to open your eyes up. We're talking about high level conversation. We're talking about everybody wants to be higher consciousness and all this other kind of stuff. It takes energy to raise higher consciousness. I'll do another call about consciousness. I got a chance to study it for real, for real. Consciousness is way deeper than, than aham, naham, 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 and saying freaking energies, bro. <laughs> like, it's consciousness is not saying, um, and meditate. No, bro. Consciousness is a actual, you got to work for that. All right. So, Pete, that's where is news today. Let's talk about the numbers. We have to talk about the numbers. The news industry itself is a $22 billion industry a year. Average watch time for an American is three hours a day. Whether it's through your phone, whether it's through national television, et cetera. And in 2022, the credibility on average, 50% of people trust the news in 2022. 50%. Not a lot. That means half. Of the 180 active working Americans, 18 and older, which is about 180 million people, only about 90 million people trust news on a day-to-day -day basis. They trust news on a day-to-day -day basis. If half the country doesn't trust the news, but yet half the country's on TikTok and they like TikTok to get their news from, wouldn't it make sense for Congress to pass a bill to ban TikTok now? Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it make sense? Dang, we as the news company are not getting the attention. We're not getting our people's attention. Huh, let's blame China for getting our country's attention. We need them to trust us. Huh, okay, because we want to control the information through the medium. We control the info and we control the medium. Now we can control your attention so we can sell you whatever we want.
But what TikTok did is because TikTok controls the information and the medium. You ever think about that? TikTok owns the information and they own the medium too, which is not the same as CBS owning the information. And then they also own the medium called Good Morning America, <laughs> right? They own Good Morning America or CBS Sports. We watch the NFL or you're going to, or in the next, literally next week, what's happening next week? The NCAA tournament, right? March Madness, who owns it? CBS, hello? Imagine if I don't got to watch all these college basketball games through CBS. I can watch them through TikTok. Why do you think they don't like streaming networks like Netflix, like Hulu, like Disney Plus? Why do you think they don't like them? Because they, they, they don't get to control the medium of info anymore. All right, I'm, just, I'm giving you guys this stuff because it makes sense. Now, check this out. This is all for my investors. If you understand where the information is coming from, you know where the medium is from, you guys can make money off of it, right? Everybody knows what the dot means, right? Some of us don't even know what these dot stuff means. So let's break it down. Dot com means commercial. Means that anybody can get it. <laughs> all right? It's open season. Everybody can get it. That's what dot com means. Everybody can own a dot com, right? Everybody can own .com. .org is for organization, right? That means an organization runs the site. PBSKids.org. <laughs> y'all remember that website? I know y'all remember PBSKids.org. Uh-huh. World Wildlife Foundation.org. Most of your nonprofits use .org. St. Jude.org, right? Organization. They run the site. The network. Right, network, this is for my techies, all my tech people, you know, cybersecurity.net, internet, tech, online, science is usually through .net sites, right? Business.biz. Makes sense, self-explanatory. Now, this, these next three, these next three are vital. So if you're taking notes and you're paying attention, these three are vital. Number one, .mil is military. Nobody, nobody can mess with these sites. It's only military information will come through these sites. .edu means education. That means it's only limited for educational institutions, meaning that I can't, as Aaron Evans, go in and duplicate harvard.edu. It's not going to work. I have to do a harvard.com. Right? EDU. Then you have government.gov. Why does it matter? Why does this matter, guys? What I listed for you is from the most manipulated all the way down to the less manipulated. Dot com, dot orgs, dot nets, and dot businesses can always be changed. Because it's you as the individual have the control. You can just do whatever you want on that site. Wikipedia. Anybody can mess with Wikipedia. <laughs> right? So, so think about it. Think about this, guys. Why did teachers, why did teachers tell you to check your credibility? It's from a valid source, right? Less manipulation. That means the information is not controlled. Why is this important to us as investors? What do you think? If I go on Bitcoin.com, who am I to trust that some random guy in Arkansas made this website? Who am I to trust that your mom made ethereum.org? Who am I to trust that? Because .com.org.net, I don't know where the information came from. And I don't know what medium they're trying to push. Because then I don't know what message is coming then how am I going to interpret the message because I don't know the source of the information? Because then, if I don't know the source of the information and I don't know the person that pushed this information, who runs the site, where it came from, what their political affiliation is, where their bias is, what their message is, 
And then I got to go make an investment decision with my money that I worked based off of somebody else that I don't know that exists. <laughs> I don't know where they exist. I don't know where they came from. And I got to go make an investment decision off of that. That's going to be way, that is going to be way more costly, right? That's going to be way, way, way more costly than ever before. All right. Way more costly. So my phone keeps ringing. People want to call me right now and I really can't. All right, bet. Cool, cool. All right. I'm glad you guys are sticking with me. We're about to get into the stew. Here we go. Hope you guys are ready. Trading news. If you're a trader, best websites. These are the best websites for traders. My investors, you're going to use Reuters. It's a global website. Global news. You are global investors. Money is a global thing. Money is not bigger than your neighborhood. It is not bigger than your job. Money is bigger than your household. You need to understand money on a global perspective as soon as you can. Macroeconomics. The more you understand the macroeconomic side of money, the easier it is for you to understand the charts. You'll understand why stuff does what it does. Guys, remember, the market moves off of people. People make decisions. People have conversations. Based off of those conversations, people make decisions. And the decisions that they make, their money follows it. And if their money follows it, supply and demand gets determined. When supply and demand gets determined, support and resistance gets defined. When support and resistance get defined, the candlestick can form. Once the candlestick can form, it creates a pattern. Once the pattern is conformed, you as the trader go, oh, there's my little white soldier pattern. There's my little black girl pattern. There's my head and shoulder pattern. But where did that pattern come from? The pattern came from some people were sitting in a room making a decision. Some people, no, they're actually, sorry. The head and shoulder pattern came from a, some kind of purchase or a transaction that was made. Whether it's trading currencies, whether it's buying government contracts, whether it's buying military equipment, whether it's buying up seeds, whether it's buying up medicine, where it's buying up technology. The whole world runs based off of transactions that from a buyer to a seller. So you as the trader are trading. The reason why the market fluctuates is because there's people buying and selling merchandise every single day at any time, given time. And all the chart is, is all the charts is just a reflection of what people are buying and selling. That's why you need to understand the global market space. Bloomberg, another great website. Love Bloomberg. Love Bloomberg. I use it a lot. CNBC. Now, I understand that CNBC is run by NBC, but all they do is talk about money all day long. Can't go wrong. If the site is designed to talk about money all day, I'm and I'm trying to make money all day, <laughs> I'm trying to... I'm trying to make this do this. I'm trying to make this money on. Do you think I need to pay attention to the money? Money. All I need to do is think about the money. Come on now. Y'all know Money Man made a whole song called Blockchain. Come on now. Pay attention. Where the money on at? I'm gonna watch CNBC. Twitter. I'm gonna give you a big gem about Twitter. Some of y'all don't use Twitter correctly. I spent I said I wanted to get a leg up on AI and crypto and, uh, you know, sometimes politics a little bit. So I wanted to know. I wanted to get ahead. You know how easy it is for you to manipulate your Twitter feed? Check me out. I made, I did an example. So I made a Twitter page. And all I have on my, all the only pages I follow on Twitter on that Twitter page are Wall Street guys. So if I want to get insight to what's happening on Wall Street, let me go follow a whole bunch of Wall Street guys. If I want to know what's happening with crypto or AI or technology, what do you think you should do on Twitter? Follow a whole bunch of tech pages. Follow a whole bunch of AI pages. 
If you want to keep up to date to the latest fight, to the latest drama, to the latest OnlyFans girl that committed suicide, to the only to the uh the upcoming episode of BMF, to the upcoming episode of Power, to what the heck Idris Elba got going on, what the heck Jonathan Majors got going on, what the heck P Diddy and his whole pedophilia situation, pretty much calling himself the Jeffrey Epstein of the of the industry. You want to stay up to up to date to that stuff? Twitter is your best place to do it. You can manipulate the mess out of your feed. It's that easy. Because Twitter is not owned by the big four major corporations. And then those corporations don't report to the government. Anyway, anyway, that's Elon Musk. That's why people, you wonder why people hit Elon Musk, right? Think about it. Elon Musk controls the information and the medium. Just like TikTok controls the information and the medium. This is cyclical, guys. Then you reason why they take certain people to court or try to file a lawsuit. Or, here's a great one. Or they try for guys, they try to throw sexual assault charges on males, especially black males. Because they know it can ruin your image like that. And then for my black women's, black women, you guys are usually over-sexualized. In the form of music, in the form of entertainment, in the form of clothing, in the form of podcasts. Just say, it all happens. It's not by accident. It's by design. The more you understand how you can control your algorithm and you want to get ahead of money, this is how you do it. Last website is Forex Factory. All right. So use Forex Factory. This is from our Forex traders specifically. This is a great website to stay up to date on all the new um, bank information, right? This is pretty much all money, right? So far, so good. We enjoying. We here. Yeah, Joya, I see you. Good, good, big thumbs up. Everybody else, we good. We following along. Bet, I see you, Q, my boy. Oh, I see the I see the whole gang in the room. What's up? What's up, man? What's up, like? What up, y'all? Hey. All right, bet. Now, this is the this is gonna be some good stuff too. Forex Factory, guys, some quick little notes, and then we're gonna actually go into the website and then show you guys some charts. So, Forex Factory, this is called your folders. There's four folders you need to know. Red are super important folders. Big impact. Orange is moderate, a little moderate stuff. And then minor is your yellows. And gray is no movement in the market. These are typically your bank holidays. All right. And that's really it. Usually major holidays or bank holidays. Okay. So these are your folders for Forex Factory. You guys getting pictures, screenshots. And then let's move on. And this is the fun part. Let's get it. These are the central banks around the world. Do you want to know where your money's at? Here they are. All the money in the world are flowing around central banks. I'll give you guys, I'm going to give you guys some wordplay, for example. Do I have my whiteboard? I do. Watch this. All right, give you guys some wordplay for today. All right, so check me out. I'm going to move my mic out the way real fast. Uh, bet. Give you guys some wordplay. This is just money. Understand how money works, right? Money, water. Money moves like water. Why? What word that you know is similar to current. What word do you know that's similar to current? You guys are smart. Take a guess. What money term do you know that's similar to the word current? Currency. Here's another one. Right? You got currency. Currents, currency.
you have rivers. Now, when money moves on a river and it collects on the side, it creates a what? You can put in the chat. Think about it. If water, if rivers flow, what do you think these areas are called? So you know you have a river and it flows, right? And then a whole bunch of money and then a whole bunch of water is collected in these little pockets, like right here or right here or right here. What do you think that's called? Riverbanks, banks. So check this out. Why is this important? Because if I, if I understand, huh, crazy, ain't it? Look at that, Joy, are you thinking with me now? Where do you think the word liquidity comes from? Liquid. And liquid what, guys? Moves. And what do you think in money terms? Where do you think the money's, what, what is money movement called? Liquidity. Come on, man. You stick with me, right? Liquidity. And you know what's crazy? And here's the crazy piece, gang. If I understand that riverbanks is where water's collected and where civilizations are born, if I understand that current that currents is where currency moves and the riverbanks is where the banks are set up, and then how liquid moves is how the market moves in forms of liquidity. Why do you think it's us to under, why do you think it's important for us to know who the central banks are? The reason why it's important for us to know who the central banks are because they're always located by bodies of water. Think about the biggest cities in the world, Los Angeles, Tokyo, Shanghai, Los Angeles, London, New York, Miami, Houston. Where are they? Chicago. Where are they all located, guys? They're all located by what? Bodies of what? Water. Not by choice. <laughs> Not by accident. So then if I want to know where the money's going, I need to position myself for where the banks are. But you need to know the banks. And here they are. These are the banks that move the money around, right? So this, the first one is the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve manages the U.S. dollar, okay? So when you see a news article come out called FOMC, right? The FOMC is the Federal Market Opening Committee, okay? They're called the Federal Market Opening Committee. These are the top... 12 governors who run the central banks in the United States. And would you look at that? All the cities I put where all the central banks are located in the United States. Yes or no in the chat, guys. Are they all located by bodies of water? Atlanta's in Georgia. Ain't there a body of water right there? Go for Mexico. St. Louis got the Right next, near the almost near the Mississippi River, right? Probably by the Missouri River, Richmond, VA. Right up there, there's the Potomac River. Right by Washington, D.C. Cleveland is in Ohio. It's located by the Great Lakes. Philadelphia, right next to the Great Lakes. New York, that's easy. Atlantic Ocean. Boston, that's easy. Atlantic Ocean. San Francisco, Pacific Ocean. Minneapolis, Minnesota, Great Lakes. It's not by, it's not by, it's by, not by chance, guys. It's by design. And there's three groups. The most important group out of all of these people, guys, is the FOMC. It's the FOMC. They're the most important. They ain't put my city, the haters, we surrounded by water, just saying. What's your city, Joya? City, not state. Detroit, that was for the automobile industry. The automo uh for 
Detroit, Michigan was the was the head place of the automobile industry and the textiles industry. After the bank, after uh, the first stock market crash, after the first crash that really ruined Detroit, the Federal Reserve banks didn't want to do business up there. Too many African American people living in Detroit. They didn't want to put it around people where there's a lot of black people. Just say that's why they're not there. Um, so more central banks, Bank of England, they manage the Great British Pound. The ECB is the European Central Bank. They manage the euro. Why is that important to know? Because you guys understand that there's over like 15 plus countries, not states, countries, entire countries that utilize the euro. Right? Man, I'm telling you. Imagine 13 countries all using the same currency. And it's managed by one person, one central bank. Crazy, ain't it? The Bank of the Ch Japan, they manage the yen. All right. The Swiss National Bank, they manage the Swiss, they manage the Swiss franc. Then you have the Bank of Canada. They manage the Canadian dollar. You have the Reserve Bank of Australia. They manage the Australian, right? The Aussie. And then the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, they manage the New Zealand dollar or the Kiwi. All right. So, so far, if this information makes sense, put a two in the chat, put a fire emoji if this information so far is starting to make sense. Things are clicking. You're starting to see, okay, cool. I'm starting to get to where the money's going. Okay, I see what you mean, news, how this flows. Bit. Cool, cool, cool. So, now when I pull up Forex Factory for you guys and you see certain folders come out, you guys now know what folders are important. So we're actually going to dive into Forex Factory and explain to you guys what folders actually matter because I'm going to be completely transparent. All news ain't good news. I got every single news thing out right now. Anything that's yellow... Don't mean a dime. Nothing. I don't care. That means nothing. To me, means nothing. All right, you're small fry. Um, why is wait the BOJ? Huh? They got a news article coming out. Wait a minute. They're the Bank of Japan. They run all the the yen. I might need to pay attention to this. Right? This is why it's important now. That's why it has a red folder. A big, I'm going to give you guys a big nugget. The Japanese yen is tightly buddy-buddy with the U.S. dollar. Just letting you guys know. So if the Bank of Japan makes a decision on something, the dollar is going to move fast and hard. And the reason why I believe the dollar and the Japanese yen and the dollar are so tightly correlated, I think it has something to do with World War II and Pearl Harbor. I might have to do more research on that. But I think it was after Japanese Japan got bombed by two atomic bombs, the Japanese economy was heavily relying upon the United States to rebuild its country after bombing it. So they just imploded a whole bunch of democracy into the country. So that's why the, I think the yen is so tightly close to the dollar. That's why pairs like USD, JPY don't move that fast. They buddy, buddy. They correlate. So they're not going to move that fast on a chart. They're not going to give you a lot of pippage. I'm going to give you guys this game. I, I mean, give you guys this game. I apologize. I have to give you this. All eight currencies are ranked like this. The United States dollar, the euro, and the Great British Pound are the strongest currency pairs in the market. And what I mean by strongest, it means by economic power, military influence, central bank money, how much money they got in the central banks. That's what that means. So the dollar, the euro, and the Great British Pound are the top three strongest currency pairs in the world. Now, <laughs> boy, you're talking too fast. U.S. dollar, Great British Pound, and the euro are the three strongest currencies in the world. That's why 
If you guys heard of the word BRICS, B-R-I-C-S, British, Russia, India, China, South Africa, are all trying to come up with the currency in the form of crypto to go weaken the dollar because the dollar has been the world's reserve currency since World War II. That means when World War II is right back in like 1940s, if I'm not mistaken, like the 1940s, it's 2024. It's almost almost been what, 80 years? It's been 80 years since the dollar has been the reigning currency around the world. So no wonder countries want to go ahead and take down the dollar because they understand how strong it is. And if they take down the dollar, right? If they take down the dollar in the form of digital currencies in the blockchain, which the United States can't control because they can't control the information or the medium, the information is crypto, the medium is the blockchain, and the United States government can't control that. Maybe we, as the other countries of the world, can control the information and in the flow of the medium through the blockchain to feed our people, which is our audience, which we give attention to. We can take down the United States without ever having to bomb them. Why do you think no country has came to the United States and bombed us yet? That's why they all those proxy wars, all the... Oh, we got nuclear weapons and stuff like that. They know dang well that dollar is too strong. So they're going to create an alliance to get all their countries together and come up with the currency to beat the dollar in the form of crypto. So you wonder why Bitcoin is at 70000 You wonder why BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street are all buying up crypto right now at massive amounts. Then you wonder why. Because they understand if the dollar gets weak, and becomes lesser and lesser of a currency, that means the value of the dollar is going to go down. And if the value of the dollar is going to go down, cryptocurrency is going to go up. And if I'm a third world country like El Salvador, Nigeria, Gaza, Russia, Ukraine, the Congo, Morocco, Dubai, if I become a crypto safe haven, and manage all this crypto. And if the dollar gets weak, the currency is going to do something like this on a chart and go up. Same thing with gold. If the US dollar gets weak and gold gets stronger, I should see a bullish chart. And all because of news is happening. All because of it. All right? After you have the, the Great British Crown and the Euro, now you fall into more of your stable, more st stable coins. Like you're more your stable currencies. Like um, Canada, the Canadian dollar, and the Swiss franc. Do you guys know that the Swiss franc has been neutral every single war? It's for a reason. That's why when you trade pairs like Aussie Sheaf or USDCHF, they don't move that fast because the Sheaf itself is a very stable currency. Not a lot of movement, but everybody wants to put their money in those Swiss bank accounts, do they not? Because they know during wartime, whether or not my family gets shot up in the front lines, all our money is in the Swiss bank. And the Swiss bank is going to take care of us so then I can pass my generational wealth through the Swiss bank. Just saying. Then you take that money, then you go from there, you go into the weaker pairs. More volatile, not strong, not as strong as economies. There's a reason why the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, and the Japanese yen are some of the weaker pairs because their economies by themselves are not that strong. Like standalone. Like the United States, Great British Pound, and the Euro can stand alone on their own. They can't. Canada, Canada, they're close, right? They got oil. No, they got, um, yeah, they have oil. They're commodity-based, so they got oil. And then you have, you know, of course, the Swiss franc. They're just safe. They've always been safe for hundreds of years. And then you have, you know, then you have the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, and the Japanese yen. So... When you guys are thinking about, you know, okay, currencies and what the strength of different news are, 
Now you guys can know how volatile a news candle is going to be. This is now, this now determines how volatile a candlestick looks on a chart. Because now you understand, okay, if I know that the United States dollar is going to come out with some kind of news and it's an FOMC news, we'll do a great example. Great example. If I know on Wednesday that the, if I understand that the FOMC is the, that entire committee of all the central banks in the U.S., and now I understand that the U.S. dollar is the strongest currency in the world, I should expect super big moves on a chart. This is how you get ahead. Oh my God, what happened to that candle? Oh my God, what did it do? Oh my God, I never seen anything like that before. That's why people like myself and my boy Q are not scared. Because we know it's coming. We understand that the dollar is the strongest currency. Now we understand that the biggest Fed bank in the world, which is the Federal Reserve, is going to talk. That's going to, you are going to see massive moves. Because you know it's coming. All right? Let's dive into some few more things on this. So, red folders. Policy rate, monetary policy statement. Big deal. Big, big, big deal. Huge deal. Right? When these banks had to talk to each other, I put it like this. I put it like this. Imagine you on the playground. Imagine you on the playground. All your friends are on the playground. And each one of your friends is a bank. Right? And, you know, remember you was a... Uh, you remember you guys went, uh, like, let's say you guys all just finished Halloween, trick-or-treating. You guys all run to the playground. You guys got all your little bag of candy. And now you got to update the rest of everybody in the group what kind of candy you got. This is what the banks of Japan are doing. When they make policy statements and they go out, they're pretty much telling the world, hey, world, we are the Bank of Japan. Our policy rate is negative 10%. Same as always. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for telling us, Japan. That allows for stability in the market. But if Japan comes out and says, all right, guys, hey, it's been a long time. It's been about five, 10 years now, but we got to change our policy statement to 0.5% now. Whoa, wait a minute. Yo, Where you were so consistent for so long, bro. Why are you tripping, man? What's the switch up for, dog? We not homies no more? Volatile movement out the market. I watched USCJPY sink 2,000 pips when I was sitting in Las Vegas back in 20, I think it was, it was a couple years ago. The friend, the Japanese, one of the Japanese uh, royal family's daughters stepped down. No, one of the royal families in Japan decided to be like, I'm done being the, I'm being the prime minister. I'm done. I'm stepping down. It was random. It was not out of nowhere. The Jap USD JPY skyrocketed 2000 pips in a second. Imagine you sitting on a chart and you look at USD JPY and you go, Oh my God, did USD JPY just skyrocket 2000 pips, bro. In a second. I lost everything in my trading accounts at that point. And I remember it vividly too. I remember sitting down in Las Vegas eating some buffet food and boom, it happened. So keep that in the back of your mind. I'm going to tell you when you guys, when I teach you guys how to back test this stuff, watch this. Cash rates. going be kind of important, right? So a cash rate, right? All a cash rate is, it's pretty much the interest rate of the country, right? It's the interest rate. So, in that sense, it's for the Bank of Australia. Their interest rates have been pretty consistent. You guys can see the history here on the right-hand side. Look at the history of their rate changes. You see it steadily going up. We were on a call today with uh, one of our educators, and she talked about talking to people about inflation and you know, kind of softly telling them, oh, it's because of inflation. Oh, it's because of this. Guys, that's all cap. You could tell right here. The interest rates have been slowly growing since 2022, gang. Inflation has been around for a gripazoid. <laughs> it's been here. 
And if the U.S. dollar has inflation, all the rest of the currencies are going to have inflation too. It's all fall the leader. It's not a surprise, guys. The cash rate says it right here. Right, the cash rate is the interest rate charge on overnight loans between financial intermediaries. Pretty much that overnight, when we're sleeping, money's still being moved. So how much is it going to cost to make that movement? How much interest is going to cost me to move money around as a central bank? And if that number keeps going up and up and up and up and up, that means this would cost more and more and more money to do money these transactions then I got to go to my citizens and go raise living wages, raise the food prices, because it's more, it's getting expensive for us to move money around as a central bank. So because it's getting expensive to money around as a central bank, we got to come out with a rate statement. And hawkish, right? More hawkish than expected is good for the currency. Think about the word hawkish. What's the root word in hawkish? Hawk, okay? What do hawks do? They fly, okay? But how do they catch their prey? They fly down. They swoop down. So what does that mean? If the interest rate is low, that's good for us. Low interest rates is good. Hawkish. Wordplay. It's just wordplay, guys. All they're pretty much saying is, if the interest rate is low, that's good for our currency. If the interest rate goes up, that's bad for the currency. Right? So, give you guys some, some key little pointers here. This goes um, into, I'll do one last whiteboard with you. One more whiteboard. And I'll be done with the whiteboard. Something about you guys just how to stand on the whiteboard here is how this works. All right. Oh, I don't have an eraser. Uh, F it. F it. All right. Whoa. Check me out. On the mic. Check me out. All right, so does it matter? So we're going to do two sides. USD, JPY, Chief, Euro, GDP, uh, GBP. This is supposed to be a B, sorry. Then we have the yen, so JPY. No, I already got the yen. I'm missing the Aussie in the New Zealand and the Canadian dollar. So Canadian, Aussie, AUD, and then you have New Zealand. All right, and then I'm going to write pretty much the same thing on the other side. Quotes means just same thing. Follow me. Quotes just means same thing. And then you have X, X, X. Okay. Give you guys some fun facts here. So, if something good, good news, right? This is good for the economy. Good news. What's going to happen to the currency pairs? If something positive comes out, so if this is good news, right, we're going to put, you know, good over here. If something good comes out, all of this, whether, I don't care what the currency pair is. If something good comes out on this side, all these currency pairs are going to go down. Because the strength of the currency 
is always going to be determined determined upon what's over here. So if something good comes out for this currency and it's XXX, don't matter. It don't matter. The currency pair is going to go down and this one is going to go up. I don't care if this is USD, BT, I don't care if it's Bitcoin, BTC, USD. The currency attached to whatever currency or asset this is, is going to sell. You could put gold over here, you know, XAU. Can't be right upside down, but I'm doing it anyway. XAU, gold, Bitcoin. Doesn't matter. It's going to go down. It's going to sell. And then the opposite side is going to go up. All right. So if it's bad news, oh my God. Inflation. Oh my God. I don't have money to pay bills. Oh my God. I don't know who I want to vote for president. Oh, we're in war. Oh, we're, we're messing up. What if... All this bad news in the media? <laughs> what do you think it's going to do to the currency pair, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, that bad boy is going to go up. And then this is going to go down. Why do you think Bitcoin's climbing? Why do you think gold is climbing? Because the dollar, ladies and gentlemen, is weak. A weak dollar causes currencies to go up. Look at a chart. How are we feeling on this? Currency strength. Does this make sense? Yes or no? Now let me know. I see y'all in the Zoom. Chop, talk to me. Does this make sense? Currency strength. News affects currency strength. They can change entire trends. <laughs> One news article can change an entire trend of a market. All right? Cool. We know we're good. We stay straight. All right, bet. So, now you guys understand. So, policy rates, cash rates, press conferences. Eh. If a, all the press conferences, it means that the person who runs the central bank is just going to come up to the stand and tell you guys about the economy. They're going to do a whole press conference. They're just going to tell the world, hey, world, this is Australia over here. Where's the thing? No, no, we ain't changing our rates. All right, have a great night. That's it. That's all that matters. When when any of FOMC, like for example, the Bank of Japan is going to come out. Hey guys, we're in Japan. Hey, just letting you guys know we're going to change our rates. We good. Okay. Thanks, Japan. Y'all really don't matter. Y'all don't have really no strength in this game, so we don't really care. But if uh, if big boy, that big boy Jerome Powell, uh-huh, Mr. Jerome, he says somebody you should follow on social media. That man, Jerome Powell, he runs the he runs the free world. That man, Jerome Powell, is the most powerful individual on the planet. I do not care what you say. He is the most powerful person on the planet. That man, if he wanted to pull the plug on the United States government, he could. U.S. government, you guys are funding whatever. You guys are doing bad stuff. Nope. Pull the plug. I don't care if you Elon Musk, Kanye West, you multi-billionaire, whatever. You still got to put our money, you still got to put money in our banks. Don't they? So if I'm Jerome Powell and I come up to the stand and I'm going to tell the world, hey, we're the United States, leaders of the free world. We're going to change our interest rates or we're going to lower our interest rates or we're going to do blah, 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 blah. Oh, the whole market's going to explode. What did it not? I'm the guy. <laughs> I'm him. FOMC statements is the most important news article ever. Now, here's the kicker. Remember what we talked about? Huh. Interest rates or rate statements by the bank. We're trying to look. I got to look good. Okay. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? I got to look good. Right. And I'll let you guys ask a question in like two seconds.
I I'll be I'll, I'll, I need to look good to everybody else on the playground. I can look fly for prom. Y'all know y'all little per, first little school dresses and y'all was looking good for the first day of class and then you saw the graduate and you got to look good, right? Uh-huh. What do you think these bank guys got to do too? These bank guys got to look good for the rest of the world, don't they? Cuz the rest cuz they want the rest of the world to keep investing and keep using the dollar. So what do you think Jerome Powell is going to keep trying to do for the U.S. dollar? He's going to try to keep making it look good. And so if he keeps trying to make it look good, and I know that the U.S. dollar, any pair with XXX USD, if the dollar gains strength, I know it's going to sell. Then for the past two and a half, three years, I've been you know trading news. I know that gold is going to sell every single time this man speaks. Huh. Ain't that ain't that crazy? I know that gold's going to sell. So when I know this FOMC is going to come out, I'm going to be selling gold like I always do. I'll teach you guys at a back test that to find that out. But I'm going to sell gold every time. Because his job, literally Jerome Powell's job is to literally make the dollar look good. No matter what. He has to. The whole world uses our currency. So if I make it look bad, that's going to give power to bricks. And then you give the power to bricks. That gets power to crypto. If you give power to crypto, we as the U.S. government can't own crypto. Whoops. Bitcoin, 150000 Bitcoin, 20 k All because the dollar itself doesn't look good anymore. You guys see how this all starting to correlate? Right? It's all starting to tie together. You're starting to see that, dang, everything's kind of connected, huh? Uh huh? And you have the gratitude to know how to trade. Ain't that crazy? You guys have the, the gratitude. You have the gratitude to know how to trade. Now you know how to trade. You see a news article come out, you know exactly what they're going to do. Because news, all it's going to do is just take you to a level of supply and demand. It's all news does. All news does, it takes you to another level of supply and demand. That's all it does. Does it? It's not random. It takes you to the next level, either a level of supply or a level of demand, depending on how good or bad the article came out. Give you guys some other red folders you need to know. CPI, consumer price index. What does this mean? What does this mean? Y'all remember that uh Cardi, you remember that Cardi B video that came out and she was in the grocery store complaining? Like, oh my, oh my God, like I went into the grocery store and uh, these, uh, look at all these groceries. They're so expensive. When did eggs become $8? And it, she was complaining. And everybody was like, oh my God, Cardi B, you are tripping. You're rich. You have money. Why does, why does this matter to you? If you're rich, broke, poor, and different, you, and you go to a certain spot over and over and over again, you know when stuff gets more expensive. So if the change in the price of goods and services purchased by us keeps fluctuating, <laughs> what does that do for me? What do you think that's going to do to the currency? If it keeps fluctuating and I got to keep spending money all willy-nilly and if this number comes out bad, right? And if this number comes out bad and oh my God, the actual, like, look, if the number comes out bad, meaning it goes down. So if the CPI comes down and it's down and it's bad than the previous one, that means we, we as people, we're not spending money. We're not, we're not spending money, guys. We're not going out and buying stuff, right? That's why it says the actual greater than the forecast is good. When the actual is better, right? We have an actual better than the forecast. That shows that there's confidence in us as the consumers is going out and spending our money, right? So, right, if the actual is greater than the forecast, it's good for the currency. What does that mean? If the number comes out and it's better than what's forecasted, it'll come out green, that's a good sign. That means there's people going out, spending money, right? Like we can, we can literally just Google it. Like we could just pull up, uh, we'll just pull up real fast. CPI, right? It's the average change of prices paid. Paid, 
right? By urban consumers. That's us. We, we run the economy, guys. Our spending power. We have to do the spending, right? So if we're spending money and we're spending money out there, we're paying for stuff, and that number is a good number, that shows that, oh, snap, people are going out and spending money. That's a good sign. That means there's money going into the economy, right? Circulating over and over and over and over and over again. If the number's bad, then there's no money being pumped in the economy. Then people are not spending money. If people are not spending money, that's bad. That's bad news. It's bad news. All right? So, cost of currency get weak. Same with this. CPI. Same thing for... It's uh, it's good for inflation data. Like, look how fluctuating this stuff is, man. It's crazy. Federal funds rates. Um, this is an important one. President Lagarde, she uh, it's he or she, I forgot who who it is. It doesn't matter. They they run the ECB. It's important when they speak. Not a lot of movement happens in the market, but it's important when this person speaks. Oh, man, you guys already know about gross domestic product. And then QQ means quarter over quarter. You guys know that. You guys understand that a recession is, met or, is measured when there's two negative quarters in a row? Two negative quarters or six months of consistent drop in GDP? That means the country itself is in a recession. Didn't the United States have two bad consecutive quarters not too long ago? But then the president in the United States didn't want to come out and say they were in a recession because if they came out and said that we were in a recession, then all the global currencies around the world would start to panic. And if they all start to panic, that means our dollar starts to panic. And if the dollar starts to panic, that means BRICS would have control. And then the BRICS has control. Then the dollar currency goes down. And if the dollar currency goes down, more people lose jobs. And then it goes into this vicious cycle. Right? So pay attention to GDP. Very important. Employment changes. Who has a job? Are people working? If people are not working, that means people are not getting paid. If people are not getting paid, people can't spend money. If people can't spend money, sellers can't sell you stuff. And if sellers can't sell you stuff, they go out of business. And if they go out of business, and then the cycle continues. Employment changes. Super important. Do people have jobs? Do they have jobs? Unemployment rates. Who don't got a job? This would be easy. Lower employment rates is good, man. That means more people are in the work, on the workforce. They're in the field, working, making money, putting money into putting money into the economy. Right? Great YouTube video. You guys can leverage this. Great, great, great YouTube video. Watch this religiously. Watch this religiously. Ray Dalio, if you don't know who this man is, you need to go ahead and watch this video over and over and over again. Specifically, you want to watch this video, how the economic machine works. Then there's another video he has. Dealing with the changing world order. And then how the economic machine works. If you watch those two videos, I tell you everything that's happening on the news, everything that's happening about the dollar, everything that's happening about crypto, everything that's happening about all these policies and stuff. I'm telling you, you're, you will know what's happening. You'll go, okay, it makes sense. And the graphics in this is so beautiful. It's graphically, vis it's visually perfect. It's, it's excellent. So how the economic machine works, principles for dealing with the changing world order. And I'm telling you right now, this is where they talk about wealth transfers. <laughs> Do you guys understand where wealth transfers happen? You always talk about, oh man, the greatest wealth transfer is among us. It's among us, but no one's telling you about it. I'm gonna look you dead in my eyes. I'm gonna tell you where it is. Wealth transfers. Wealth transfers happen when two big economic powers change. 
That's when it happens. When tensions are high, inflation is high, people are fighting internally within the country, people don't trust the politicians, the wealth transfer is happening. I'll give you the industries of where it's happening. AI, crypto, tech. We all know that. AI, crypto. You're watching it. The wealth transfer is right there in front of your face. Watch those two videos and call me wrong. Come back to me. Circle back to me and watch those videos and tell me I'm not lying. It's happening right there in front of your face. That's where the wealth transfer is going to happen. All right. Now, a couple red folders that don't matter. French flash manufacturing, these flat, no, nah, they don't matter. They don't do anything to the market. No kind of movement from what I've seen. Um, so any stuff like this matters. I love the Swiss franc gang. They're cool. But if you guys look at their rate, policy rates, bro, they've been the most consistent ever, bro. They barely change. I love the Swiss franc guys, but they don't really do much in the market. There's nothing really you can do about them. But this is a big deal. Yeah, the MPC, these guys, woo, big deal. The MPC official bank rate votes. All right, we got to break this one down because it's very interesting how this works. So the vote is reported in an XXX format. The first number is how many MPC members, which is the people in the parliament in the Great British Pound, they vote to increase the interest rate. Right. The second number is how many voters to decrease it. And the third is to hold it pretty much like I abstain. Right. So they go to a vote, gang. <laughs> they go to a vote. And it's 10 people. Probably about 10 people. They all sit in a room. Looks like it's nine. Nine people. So there's no kind of um, tie. Right. You got nine people in the room all sitting around each other going. Uh, do you want to increase the rates? Or do you not want to increase the rates? And they go. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, we'll vote. No wonder Europe is struggling. Look at their past nine votes, y'all. 2022, gang. They been, look what they've been voted. All from this is post COVID. Interesting enough. Post COVID, this. Look at all them. Nine of them was like, yep, increase the rates, increase the rates. They did that one, two, three, four times in a year, five times, six times. Seven, eight, not like all of year of 2022, they've all voted in majority to raise the interest rates. All in 2023, they voted to raise the interest rates. And in February of this year, they finally decided to go, nah, nah, we want to bring them down. So then when you guys look on a chart and you guys notice how things are going up and up and up and people are getting more mad and more mad and more mad, isn't that kind of scary that for the... For the entire Great British Pound. This is the UK. Nine people sit in a room and vote. Whether to raise it or not. Nine people. Nine. And you don't even get the vote for these people. Did you know that? Half of these people that work for central banks, they're appointed by the president. See, now you see why voting is important? Why they try to push like voting is important sometimes? Because the people that we vote for literally control the monetary policy in our countries, in our global economies. So I hate the fact that you may not want to pay attention to politics sometimes, but politics plays a big game into this because who they know is who they know. And based on who they know can literally change the entire course of our charts that we study. Forget technical analysis. If one person in any of these ec economies go, nah, we're going to change this all up. You thought you was in an uptrend one day, you'll wake up and the entire market is flipped on you. And you went, oh my God, what happened? Uh, Nine people said we wanted to increase the interest rates. Candlesticks, super long and then the eyes can see. Euro Summit, big deal. Big deal, damn. Is it really this Friday? Huge deal. Huge deal. Chairman Powell speaks again on Friday. Big deal. And then retail sales. Last thing for this, and then I will let you guys go. It's been a long call. 
Um, changing the value of inflation adjustment sales at a retail level. Guys, like, you go out, how much does your underwear cost? How much does your bra cost? How much does your laundry detergent cost? That's what retail sales is telling us. How often do stores have to fluctuate their chain, pr change of price? Just like the Cardi B video. How often do grocery stores have to change their prices to meet with inflation that nine freaking people voted for? So if you see, this is now, okay. All right. I hope you guys catch this, catch this game I'm giving you. If the Bank of England comes out, and this is something you can study. Do some back testing on this. If the Bank of, if the English Bank comes out, the Great British Pound, they come out and say, eh, we're going to raise interest rates. What do you think that might do to retail sales? Because they got to raise the rates. That means they got to increase the sales of goods and services, which is going to affect how many people is going <laughs> to buy our stuff. You now can almost predict what the news candle is going to do. And then you can almost predict which way the currency pair is going to go. Which means that you can almost predict. If you almost predict, you know that where the currency pair is going to go. You know because of this rate, if they vote this way, that causes this news article to do this. That means you technically, in a day in advance, can set up trades. And then you wonder where liquidity sweeps come from? Fake outs come from? I'm just saying. You have it, you have it in. Where do you think sometimes these politicians do insider trading from? Because they sit on the seats that make these decisions. That's why Congress people make so much bread, man. Trading. But how are we feeling? How are we feeling, man? We've been on here a while. Um, I'm going to allow you guys to ask questions. I know we didn't get dive into the charts. We might have to do a part two. Would you guys would like a part two? You guys can unmute your mics. You guys like a part two? Hey, yo, Aaron, I'm not even going to uh, lie. Go ahead, Q. You hear me? Loud and clear. How y'all doing today? In here with my boy AB and French, man. We just we just cooking up in here. But I just had a quick question for you, AB. I mean, I had a quick question for you, AE. My fault. Um, so I was on Curtis uh, Cobain, if y'all don't know, that's a crypto educator. And he was saying that uh, lately the the fair rate has been pretty consistent. He's had a pause on it. Like he hasn't made it go up. He hasn't really made it go down. And I'm assuming he's doing that just simply because if he makes the if he makes the interest rate go up, then at the end of the day, that makes dollar essentially look bad. If he makes it go down, then he has to do a whole bunch of other stuff to balance everything else out. Pretty much. So my question to you is, if tomorrow he comes out tomorrow and it pretty much stays consistent, then that means are we really going to start seeing consolidation in the market? Or or what are you looking at if we get that 5.5% tomorrow? Yeah, so if I look at it like if we get a lot of – if he comes out and he's like, just hold the rates, hold the rates, then there's that's a sign of indecision. We have we're not really making a decision of where you want to go. We don't know if we want to go up, we don't know if we want to go down. So for us, we'd rather stay still. Which then investors and different global investors, they're gonna sit back at home and go, okay, dang, what do we do with that information? Do we shy away from the dollar now? Do we start pumping in? Are those is that signs of the market's doing better. Is it holding still? Those kind of, so I would look for consolidation most likely. If he keeps holding these rates, I'm going to keep seeing consolidation in the market. Um, To consumers, that's a good thing though, because hey, it, at least it ain't going up. <laughs> at least it ain't going up for us. Like we don't have to keep getting punished for the rates keep going up. So we like that as consumers. So that can affect CPI and PPI. That can affect how we spend our money now. Because if inflation goes up, that makes us scared to put money in the market, right? To invest. But if the numbers hold still, we might see a good CPI. We might see a good PPI come out because of the fact that, hey, he held the rates. Okay, I've kind of adjusted my standard of living a little bit. I can hold still. 
we really wanted to go down, but I would say consolidation um, in like the bigger scanner things, but that could definitely affect how the PPI and the CPI can come out um, for us as consumers. Because there's a thing called sentiment, sentiment analysis. So we have technical analysis, which is all the charts and the fancy stuff. You have your fundamental analysis, which pretty much what we did tonight, knowing the fundamentals, which is the news. And then you have sentiment, our emotions. So if I'm emotionally feel like I'm struggling and the Federal Reserve comes out and says, hey, we're just going to hold the rates. We're not going to increase them. Oh, phew. OK, that gives me a few more months to keep figuring this thing out. Keep helping, you know, I mean, that kind of stuff. If think about it, it's like um, it's kind of like you guys in the room, right? If y'all are in the room and you guys are discussing, and no decision is made. You guys are not going to go out. You guys are not going to go get food. You guys are not going to decide to go to bed, right? You're just going to keep sitting there and just look dumbfounded at each other. Nothing's going to move. Think about that from a federal perspective. You got They haven't made a decision. They're deciding to not do anything. The dollar itself is pretty much going to stay on its normal trajectory. So we can look more towards if he keeps consistent. My idea is always to continue looking more on the technical side. Look for the technical side of things. If the rates go up, if he decides to raise the rates up or down, then I'm going to be looking for levels of supply and demand in the market and figure out where's the nearest supply and the nearest demand. Where's the liquidity at? Where's the money? Because nine times out of 10, investors are going to go, okay, hey, yo, Jerome Powell's going to, he going to lower the rates, homie. Y'all know, y'all know when you got that little room on y'all. Oh, yo, I heard, oh, I heard that old girl about to be at the party, dog. You know, the one with the red dress at the last one. I heard she going to be there. You guys talk, right? Rumors spread. So if Jerome Powell, rumor spreads that he's going to raise the rates, all the big investors like the politicians, BlackRock, Vanguard, Apple, Tesla, all the big name companies or and the private sector, they're going to go, okay, looks like he's going to raise them rates. All right, Ben, where's the liquidity at? Where are the retail traders? Us. Where have we been putting our money? Have we been selling? Have we been buying recently? Okay, dang. Okay, we've been buying recently. Hugh, give me a date of the last FOMC statement. We'll pull up a chart right now and I'll show you the example. Give me a date. When was the last time we had an FOMC uh, article? Actually, I'll find it right here. I'll find it right on my... Uh, you guys can adjust this website. You can take all the red folders out. You can uh, add plot a filter. And we can actually filter it again. We can take it out. The, we can change all the currencies that you want to see. Focus on the dollar. Uh, let's do the speeches because we don't care about the surveys. Surveys, housing, we don't care. Miscellaneous, we don't care. We care about this stuff. So apply filter. All right. So we know that he spoke on the 25th. Uh, when was the last one? When he spoke, which was FOMC. Okay, press conference. That's what we're looking for. Testifies, don't do anything. Yeah, federal chair testifications, that doesn't do much. Meeting minutes, don't do much. This is a big deal when he speaks, though. All right, press conference. This is where he kept the rates at 5-5, five, five, right? This was at 2 p.m. January 31st. We're going to pull up a handy dandy chart. We're going to go to gold. I'll show you guys exactly when that happened. We'll go to uh, the commodities. We'll go to gold. And what was the date? January 31st at 2 p.m. What time zone are we in? Always pay attention to your time zone. We're in Eastern Standard Time. I need to go to Central because that's where I'm located, which would be Central America, so Monterey. Save settings. Cool. Changes the time zones to central. So that aligns with my computer. Now I gotta go, I gotta go back to the last one. It's January 31st, right? Yeah, January 31st at 1 p.m. Eastern stand at 1 p.m. Central. So now I can go to a chart. This I'm giving you guys this is how you guys back test news, by the way. What I'm doing right now is this is how you guys back test news articles. You ever wanted to back test news? You ever wanted to find out, okay, what news articles does what? Let's go back to where Jerome started talking, January 31st at 1 p.m. That man came out and said something wild, didn't he? He kept the rates the same. So when the rates were the same, notice how, where is it, right? 
there. This is exactly when the rates came out. It said it was at 1 p.m. Central. Is my chart Central Time too, or am I off? It's New York, so I need to change it to Chicago. Yep, because that's my time zone. I'll do Mexico. Nope, Mexico City. And that's right by Texas. So cool. All right, now I change the time zone to match my time. There's that one o'clock news candle. He kept the race the same, right? News candle came out. Look what gold did. Dropped. The moment that man came out, you can even get like really nitty gritty with it too. You can go right down to the hour too. So let's, let's pull up a 15 minute chart. Why not? Let's go find that article. If my chart will load today. Yikes. I'll let it load. But Key, you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm doing? Like, this is like how you figure this kind of stuff out. Like, oh man, like what? I find the time the article comes out. I go in the past when it opened. You guys can see what happened when the market, when that man Powell started, said what he said. For my technical analysis traders, you like, oh man, the technicals, da da da, but the technicals are everything. All right, cool. But look what happened in 50, 30 minutes before the article, the, the announcement came out. News article dropped at what time? One o'clock. Boom. He does the funds rate. That man talking. Boom. He pulled up a chart. Here's the one o'clock candle. But look what happened like 30 minutes before. Where was the liquidity? So all these people were what? Selling. There's that downward pressure. From everybody was selling. So that means there's money sitting up here. Right? All them stop losses. All them stop losses for all them sales, right? So what does the market do? Oh, we need to go get that money. Go get that liquidity. And then we go sell that bad boy. Bam. And that was roughly 100 from this sell. Let's say we just trade the candle itself. 2044 to 2032, all the way down to 2033, 2030. That's a 140-pip move in a matter of, what, 15 minutes? All because that man, Jeremy Powell, decided, oh, okay, we're just going to keep the race the same. Which, once again, remember, he kept the race the same. Because he kept the race the same, right? Because the man kept the race the same, that's good for us as the consumer. Because we're like, okay, bet. All right, bet. You kept them the same. That's good. Drop. But then watch what happened. What do you think? Look up the market did right after that drop, though. This goes into your point, Q. The initial drop happened. But then look what happened right after that. Went right back into consolidation again. Just went right back to consolidate a little bit. And then because it defined a level of demand, which a lot of us like to use that big word. The news article found a level of support. That's all it does. It tested a previous level of support. Look, we've been here before. All news does is just goes back to the area of demand or support that it needed to define. So it bought off, it sold, all right, bam, right to this level of demand or support. Bounced off, came right back, W pattern, dropped the counter trend line, buy off to the move. There goes gold take off. And that was on February 1st. What news article came out February 1st, right after that happened? The rate changes. Rate changes come out. Okay, you keep the, the rates the same. And then the employment change goes up by a ton. Right? Oh, my God. The employment rate goes up. The change of number of employee people. So it's good. Good for the currency? Oh, snap. Then the employment rate comes out, lowers it down. Oh, snap. But AE, man, but I don't understand. Like, wouldn't that be good for the dollar? Wouldn't, wouldn't the dollar sell? Wouldn't the dollar sell in this instance? Well, where's the most closest area of supply and demand in the market at the time? The market's already sitting at a level of support. So then I can go, even though it's good, Satori, let's let's look at it right now. We'll go right now. The rate statement just came out for the uh the, the Australian. We'll look at it right now. We'll watch a live news piece come out. 
Let me change this. Uh, the Aussie rate statements just came out, right? Let's go to the uh, the date, March 18th. Oh, the range, we need it from here to here. Five settings. All right, rate statement just came out, right? Didn't change. When was the, guys, peak game. It hasn't changed. Look how, where it changes. Boom, it rarely changes, right? We pull up GBP AUD. Where is the, uh, I think it's in the uh, Asian, right? GA? No, nah, GA's in the uh, other. Yeah, it's in the uh, others. It sits in the others. <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I really hope I call this cap, guys. The rates haven't changed. That means the rate hasn't changed. That makes the, that made the Australian dollar get super, super weak because they haven't changed. That gives more strength to the pound. Remember we talked about how the pound is way stronger than the Aussie anyway. It's not a surprise. That's not a surprise that it's buying. And you know what's even crazier? Here's something even crazier. Oh, wow. I hate it when it does this. It does that, guys. So look, 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 look. I'm going to try to do GA. Uh, I'll just pull a trade. For this one, I don't know why it does this. We'll just pull a trading view for right now. Just to show you guys what I'm talking about. We'll do GA on trading view and show you a great example. So let's just do all right. Launch the chart. Peak. Peak this, right? So you guys see it. And I was talking to Stacy today over the phone. I was like, yo, if we get that candlestick engulfing pattern on the one hour. I'm buying GA. I just use technical analysis. I know this is gonna buy. Why did why do, why was I so confident that I knew price was gonna buy? Where was price sitting at all day, guys? At a level of support. So where's the next area of liquidity is it gonna go to? It's gotta go up. It's gotta go sweep what? It's gotta sweep all this down pressure that it gave earlier. All the money's up here. So what is the news gonna do? Uh, go get the money. News will always go where the money is going. News will always take you to where the money's at. But hope that answered your question, Q. <laughs> like in full encapsulation. Okay, awesome, awesome, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys' time tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful call. Uh, we've exposed the news. We talked about how news cycles work a little bit. Um, you guys definitely let me know. Would you guys like a part two one day, you know, later in the future, you know, definitely dive into a deep part two. Okay, bet. Yeah, I see y'all on Instagram, man. I see y'all tapped in. Y'all been hopping in on the live back and forth. So I hope you guys been enjoying the stew. Hope you guys enjoy the stew, man. Um, I love you guys a lot. I appreciate your time tonight. Have an amazing evening. God bless you all. Peace.